Hey, what's up guys? Going for a bit of a different style today, partly because I'm under the weather and I don't have energy to edit right now, um, but also I just believe that this would be easier to present what's new in the macOS 11.3 beta. So this isn't actually out yet to the general public, it's in beta and uh, it's just a really cool feature that I thought you guys would be interested in. So in this beta, iPhone and iPad apps now have the ability to use uh, keyboard and mouse and you can also adjust some of the touch alternatives. So I thought for the first game that we would have a look at Sky Children of the Light. So generally beforehand, to play a game like this you would either have to plug in a controller if it's controller supported or you would have to use the on-screen touch controls and it just it didn't work very well and it was really awkward I could I gave some feedback in my first Apple in one video about this and um, I'm really glad that they put this in so what you can do is you can enable a controller emulator which then makes your keyboard act as if you were playing with a controller so as you could see here spacebar is for a input a and WASD keys are for moving around as if you're on a controller and R1 there and so forth. So for example in Sky you can now pan the camera left and right up and down. The only thing here is that, and let's make this full screen by the way, the only thing here is that the mouse cursor is still on screen but I imagine that Apple may optimize this so that the Apple cursor disappears. But as you can see right now, I'm actually moving around with WASD keys and you can use space to jump. Each game has different inputs, so it can be quite different for each game. And we'll get into the pros and cons of that with other games soon. But Scar Children of the Light is pretty well optimized. The only thing, the issue that I'm having is that the mouse sensitivity is really high and there is no way to currently adjust that so hopefully Apple looks into that in the future. Okay so here we are in yeah, Among Us and beforehand you would have to move around with the on-screen buttons and it was just it was not really possible. However now you can go into preferences and enable the controller emulator emulation and you can move around with the WASD keys and you can interact with the uh, world around you. However, in this game it's not very well optimized. For example, when you press, let's say, D, uh, the character moves forward too far because of it's using continuous key down events, I believe, so it has an impact there. Uh, and as you can see, here we are, um, we, are in the, we are taking part in the objective and that's done. The only thing is it takes a while to understand which button you actually have to press because um, as you can see these don't really rep represent a keyboard, they represent a controller so it's quite confusing. So in this instance to interact with something you press uh, F I think, let's just do that again. Nope, not F, uh, okay I think that is E. Okay, to, to interact with something in this instance, you press E. Um, and yeah, and I, I just died. Okay, so now here we are in Dead Trigger 2. And first person shooters before this update were kind of unplayable unless they had controller support. And in this instance, we can now enable our keyboard. And as you can see, as you can hopefully see. Okay, there you go. It's working. So as you can see, you can look around and you can even aim down the weapon with the right button on your mouse. Um, it's just the, still the problem is the mouse cursor, which is very, very obviously annoying. And the aim sensitivity is so high. But it's, it's kind of playable. And here we go. We can shoot these zombies by left clicking. And yeah, so it's a uh, is much better than using the touchscreen controls. <laughs> I 
All right, here is an example of a game which does not have controller support on iPhone and iPad. So how would you actually play it on a Mac if you don't want to use the, you know, on-screen touch controls? Well, you go into preferences and you enable touch alternatives. And now you can use the keyboard as if you are kind of playing with the touch screen. For example, you can press space to accelerate and time your jumps here. And yeah, it works really well for this type of game, which really only needs one, one, a one button mechanic. Whereas games which are more complex, like a first person shooter that doesn't have controller support is still not very playable. So here we are in Counter Attack. This game doesn't have controller support on iPhone or iPad, so what you can do is you can enable the touch alternatives. However, for, the, for this instance, it doesn't really work. You can rotate the camera with the left and right sticks, and you can somewhat move with the keyboard, um, but that's it, you can't really do anything else. You can also hold down Option um, to look around, hold Option and then look around with the trackpad. But it's, yeah, I think Apple need to find a way to configure this so that you can play more naturally. Okay, here we have Unruly Heroes, which is a new platformer that just came out. Um, it has a very similar level structure to Odmar, and it's a great, great game. So what you can do here is enable the controller emulation, and, it's, and then the, it will believe that a controller is connected and it is now completely playable with the keyboard, um, menu interaction and all. You can move around with WASD keys and you can attack with the letter Q. So currently it is still a little bit awkward. I'm waiting for Apple to allow you to customize the inputs. So for example, you could make the attack button something more uh, manageable like, I don't know, uh, the letter F or G or something, depending on what you like. And you can also switch characters with Tab. But besides that, before this, this game would have only been playable on M1 with the controller, but now you can more comfortably play it with your uh, keyboard. Vice City is my second most played GTA game. Uh, coming in first is GTA 5 and then San Andreas is probably third. This is a good example of a third, another third person game. It's definitely way more comfortable to play it with a controller still, mainly because of this annoying mouse on screen, and also the inputs are kind of awkward. For example, if you want to sprint, you have to hold down spacebar. Apart from that, that's the only issue really. You can press E to get in the cars, and then you can accelerate with spacebar. <laughs> and that's pretty much it. <laughs> I'm still a very bad driver though. The other update that is new is that you can now make the apps a little bit larger. So here is a preview of before and after.